Hi everybody! Happy Saturday! Alright, putting on my iPad here, make sure that everything looks good. Let me know if you guys can hear me and see me okay. Alright, looks like I'm on. Looks good to me. How's everybody doing today? Let me know how your weekend is so far. Alright, sounds like it is all working okay. Oh good, I see some people jumping on. Hello, hello. Let me know how everything is looking and sounding in the comments. We will get started here in just a minute. Alright, today we're making some beautiful uh, cake toppers, so I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do it, but I did these Mother's Day themed. I know that the text is flipped because I'm um, using my front camera, but it's a super mom uh, on this one, which is very, very pretty. And then we're also going to be making one that's on a base if you wanted to do it on a base. So this one says best mom. Um, so very Mother's Day themed, but there's lots of different ways you can change this design up. And I'm going to talk about insetting edible flowers into your ice melt work, which is very, very fun. And uh, you can also swap out for lots of different decorations inside. So I'll kind of go over what can be put into ice malt and what can't be put into ice malt um, for this for actually encasing into the ice malt, which will be very fun. Hey, Tahisha. Good afternoon. How are you today? Thanks for coming on. All right. So I will just wait a minute here. I was uh, heating up a little bit of ice malt, so I'm just going to check that in my microwave really quick. Yep, that's looking good. All right, uh, let's see. Could you grab me a bag of ice milk, please? We'll be right back, guys. Thank you. All right. Hello, hello. Comment where you're watching from if you would like. I would love to know where you are. Tisha said, I'm okay, and yourself, and hi, Michelle. Hi, Tisha. <laughs> We're doing pretty good today. The weather is beautiful outside in Florida right now. All right, so uh, we will go ahead and get started with our toppers. So for anybody who's just jumping on, we're gonna be making some beautiful uh, kind of edible flower encased into ice malt topper. I said that backwards. Um, ice malt toppers with uh, some edible flowers encased into them. I'm going to be doing a Mother's Day theme. And then I'm also going to be using some edible images um, to make sure... Oh, that's a good idea. I can just flip them around, can't I? It's ice malt. Now you can see the words <laughs> a little bit better. Um, but we're going to be using some ice malt and uh, encasing edible flowers. We're going to be using some gold. And I'll just kind of go over all the things you, that you can and can't uh, encase into ice malt. I'm also going to be going over the edible images that I like to use and the differences between them. And then how you can put all of that together into one piece. So you can adapt this to Mother's Day, Father's Day. Um, lots of different uh, holidays uh, and themes. You can change the colors up. You can uh, use it with cookie instead. You can make this into lolly pops. There's lots of different ways you can change it up, but I thought I would make some nice big toppers that you can then put into your cakes. Uh, just kind of mix it up a little bit. So it does look so pretty. Oh, thank you. Uh, hi, Ira from Ocala. Hello. Hey, Jenny is in Kentucky. And we'll see Ira at summer classes. Yeah, I'm so excited for our summer classes in June. Um, and we're going to be here in Cocoa Beach, Florida, or close to here, but in Cocoa Beach, Florida. Um, let's see, perfect. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started then. Um, and we will just kind of go over everything to create these toppers. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I will be watching the chat. Once I turn my phone down, I'll have it on my iPad in front of me. And then Mom Michelle is here too. Um, I think she just wrote in the comments and she will be watching. Make sure I don't miss anything. Hey, Evelyn, how are you today? All right, great. So, uh, of course, we're starting out with our steamy ice melt. So, steamy ice melt is pre-cooked, ready to use. All you have to do is melt it. So, it's already in the pre-cooked tiles here. And when you melt down the tiles, since they are pre-tempered already from the powder, they've gone through the whole tempering and cooking process, the temperatures, the exact methods you need to follow to get it nice and crystal clear and um, for it to be stabilized properly, uh, then you just have to melt it when it's in this form. So, all I do is I pop it in a silicone bowl in the microwave for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it's a liquid. And then you can just pour it right into your molds or your forms or for whatever you're going to use it for. So um, starting with semi-ice melt just makes it really, really easy and simple. 
to so that you can uh, kind of focus on the creative end of it, which is always the part that we're most excited about, right? So this makes it so that all you have to do is melt and then you get to do all the fun stuff that I'm going to show you today to create these toppers. Um, so like I said, it is crystal clear, doesn't have uh, any additional air mixed in. It's just going to be a really nice base that you could uh, also add in color or flavor. So we do have pre-colored tiles as well if you wanted uh, the color consistent or you can um, color it yourself. If you wanted to add color into this, you can use an edible airbrush color mixed in once it's melted or a powdered color like a luster dust or petal dust. Just keep in mind you'll want to pick uh, the finish that you want. So if it's an airbrush color, it's going to give you a more transparent color, uh, which would be perfect since we are insetting pieces into the isomalt here. So if they're inset, uh, you don't want an opaque color since then it would just cover up all of the uh, decorations that you're laying in, especially with the edible prints. So a transparent color, which is why I went with clear because I really just wanted that glassy look, is going to be best. You just want to make sure that you never mix in gel color because gel color will break down the isomalt and not allow it to dry properly. So a liquid airbrush color or a powder color like Luster and Petal Dust is perfect at ice malt. Now also, I'm making kind of decorative toppers today, but everything that I'm using is edible. So if you wanted to add a flavor into this, you can use an oil-based or again, a powder-based flavoring. Um, and those two will work really well because they're gonna be really concentrated. But again, keep in mind, the oil-based will be a little bit clearer and then the powder-based will be more of an opaque finish. So just pick which one that you want for whatever your project is. All right. So we just melt that in the microwave, 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals, and then we're going to go ahead and pour our pieces. Now when you pour um, into all of the different um, forms and shapes that we'll talk about in a few minutes, you can choose a couple of things to inset in with your um, ice malt. So I'm going to be using an edible image. This is going to be a cello sheet, which I'll talk about here in just a second. And then I'm also going to be using some edible flowers and some edible gold leaf. So this is real gold leaf um, that is an edible, so make sure you're not just getting foil, you are getting real gold. Uh, and then the flowers that I'm using for this one, I actually dried my own, grew and dried my own flowers. Um, so this is a uh, pansy. And I have a couple different ones I'll show you, but I really like how the purples and yellows came out together. Of course, I love yellow anything, but I think that the purple really uh, accented it nicely. So I did grow these. Um, my grandma Barbara uh, got us one of those aero gardens that you can grow hydroponically flowers. Um, so I did some um, violas and I did some pansies uh, last year and I dried them and saved them. And so I've been using those on some projects because they are edible. Um, so those are going to be really, really pretty. This is technically the front, um, but the words are flipped. So I was just showing you guys the back since it's... Uh, the camera flips the words. Uh, but I also laid in some gold so you can see it kind of reflects really nicely. And then this one is uh, the one that I'm going to be showing you guys the design today. I'm using some, um, actually it's a rose tea. So it has like the rose petals, the dried rose petals um, that's made for tea, but it is all food safe and everything. So I'm using that inside with some gold as well because it just looks really pretty with gold in there. I think that dried flowers and uh, gold just work really nicely together. Now you can also choose um, other types of kind of pieces to put into it. So you can use different kinds of edible flowers. They just, they do need to be dried because you don't want the moisture. And also if there's any preservatives or anything, if you bought them rather than grew them, um, you don't want that into your ice malt. So they do have to be dried to make sure they're going to set in there nicely and not get any moisture um, or anything come out from the heat. And then um, you can use different sprinkles if you want to. The only thing with sprinkles you have to think about is that they're not going to be a meltable uh, kind of sprinkle. So if there's something made out of like gelatin, in, um, like those cake sparkles and things like that, those could melt. So you may just have to do a little test or kind of try them out on little samples to see what's going to work best. You could also let the ice melt cool a little bit before you add um, certain sprinkles and things to make sure that they're not going to melt too much into the piping hot ice melt. But um, I use a whole bunch of different kinds of sprinkles with no problems. Um, you can use also like a royal icing transfer if you wanted to. So when the royal icing transfers are dried, you can add those into there because um, the ice melt can go over top of that. So there's lots of different ways that you can kind of change it up or or of course, you could just use a whole icing image, uh, a whole edible image. So the edible image that I'm going to be using today is a cello sheet. So the cello sheet is completely clear. It's an edible paper that is totally clear. And then I print it on. So the cello sheets themselves blank are from icing images, but then I get them and I print my designs, which are available pre-printed on my website. Um, so this one, it says best mom. And the other one I had said super mom. So they actually come in a sheet together. Um, but of course you can get lots of different designs. You could print your own if you have your own edible printer. Now the cello sheet works perfect for the glassy finishes because it is transparent. So you're not going to see anything around it and it just makes it really really easy because I actually won't have to cut out all of these individual letters to get a glassy finish this whole entire piece has cello sheet across the whole thing so it actually is just 
the words that you see glassy, but this is all cello sheet on top of the ice melt as well, but you can't tell because it's across the whole thing and it's totally clear. So it makes doing really fine like scripts and words like this so much easier than cutting them out individually, unless of course you had an electronic cutter um, or a lot of patience, that's fine. Uh, you can do the same process with at the ice melt ice melt transfer sheets as well, or the icing sheets, just regular icing sheets. The difference with those is going to be the opacity of the design. So cello sheets are going to be, of course, totally clear so that you can't really see anything that's not printed. Uh, now the uh, transfer sheets are going to be kind of an in-between. So the transfer sheets are semi-translucent. You can still see light through them, but they are going to be opaque enough that you can't really see into them. You can't see all the way through. And then the icing sheets are totally opaque on the back. So you'll see the printed uh, pattern and you'll see the white around it because of course the sheet would be white if it's icing and then you can't see anything through it. So depending on the opacity that you want, this looks really pretty as a cake topper because generally there's not going to be anything really behind the cake topper. But if you were putting this in front of something that's really busy, you can see um, you know, that it doesn't show up quite as well when there's lots going on behind it. So it works better when it's on sort of like a blank background, like a wall behind it or something like that. Um, so again, just kind of pick out the one that's going to work best for your project. Um, and if it's going to be up against like a busy cake or if it's going to be on top, you know, things like that will adjust. And as you use them more and more, you'll kind of get an eye for which sheet is going to work best. But for this, I am using that cello sheet. And uh, we're going to be using our Flexform molds as well. So I'm going to tilt the camera down here and show you how we're going to get that set up. Okay, let me just check the comments really quick here. Uh, perfect, perfect. Hey, Donna. Hi, Jesse Ann. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Okay, so bear with me just a second. I'm going to tilt my camera down so you can see my mat, and then we'll get started. For anybody who just jumped on, if you have any questions throughout the entire live, please feel free to ask. I'm going to do my best to get this straight. Uh, I think that looks good. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah, there's a lag. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think that that looks good. All right. So here is our pretty pieces. You can see I have it flipped over again to the back, but the back looks equally as pretty, which is something that I love about these pieces. It's really good for if you are doing like a 360 cake. So um, you can see through on both sides. Okay, so here is the topper. So I did one on a base and one freestanding, and I'll kind of show you how I do those. All right, move these guys over. Now, I'm going to be pouring, not on my silicone mat, but on my non-stick baking liner mat. I don't really like to pour big surfaces uh, like this on silicone mats because silicone breathes from heat and it can wave and bubble up a little bit. So I don't like to pour directly on a silicone mat for bigger pieces. I wouldn't do anything bigger than like maybe a quarter size um, for pouring out onto a silicone mat. But I'm going to be using this uh, non-stick baking liner. You can also use a piece of aluminum foil. The aluminum foil works really, really good, but you do have to grease it. So if the ice melt's going to be touching directly onto the mat, um, then you will have to grease the foil with cooking spray. Or they do sell specifically non-stick foil, which is my favorite to work with if you're going to be using foil because you don't have to grease it. Um, so just make sure that you do that, um, those steps. If you don't have this one, this one here doesn't have to be greased, though. So Amy would like to know if you had any uh, suggestions on places to buy edible dried flowers. Um, there are lots of places. I would probably check Etsy um, because they have a lot of like edible options. Um, you can grow your own, and you know if you have a uh, an area that you can do that. Do you know of any places? Well, like we have a lot of local farms. Yeah. That even throughout the winter, That's they're true. growing a lot of the edible flowers um, for wedding cakes and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. So I would definitely, um, even if you have to contact like your local ag center, that's to a good see idea. What's in your area? But yeah. You could probably Google. Yeah, because it's always best to support small business and local businesses when you can so yeah. I like that for sure um, yeah you definitely can find uh, a lot a very wide array of dried flowers too I'll show you guys the ones that I'm using too um, before we get this set up because I wanted to do that so this is the roses um, that I'm gonna use I just have this on my Amazon storefront there's a link to it it's just like a, a dried rose tea that you can steep into water um, to make tea so that's what I'm gonna be using but the purple ones are pansies that I grew. So like I said, I used an arrow garden and I, I took some footage of that. So I'm definitely going to post more about that 
and then I dried them. I actually use the microwaving method to dry the flowers, um, where you press them into paper towels and you dry them. Um, and I have to say that Arrow Garden produced so much flowers. I mean, you have yeah, them for a year. I have so many here, and I've used so many already. I'll show you all of the ones. Yeah, I, I definitely have enough to get me through all year. And then I did some violas as well, this pretty... Um, all yellow and purple, and I just um, I just got edible flower seed packs to do this, but you can grow lots of different kinds of edible flowers. Yeah, I have all of these still. I did this in probably, I think I harvested them maybe around like October-ish. I think it was right before we went to CI, um, yeah. maybe a little bit before that. And it only took, in the, the hydroponic garden, it only took a, like two months to start getting flowers. It was so fast. And I did it in the middle of summer here, which usually these flowers don't grow. Uh, they, they might grow if you are better at gardening than I am, but um, they wouldn't grow in the middle of summer, I would assume. So Not I love here. that. Not here. Yeah. So they have to be indoor. Um, yeah, mine was indoor and it just, it worked so well. There's a little straggler And honestly, over here. they just kept going and going. I mean, they just mm -hmm. kept yeah. blooming. I tried to stay on top of, um, you know, cutting the flowers off whenever they were ready and it just it made them produce so many more it was crazy and i've already used so many uh, of these already for this piece and for other pieces so it is pretty crazy and i definitely recommend it i'm looking forward to growing more because you can do vegetables and things in there too but i think i'll just keep growing flowers and uh, maybe i'll dry some of the leaves next time too so i can do more like foliage and um very pretty kind of finishes so definitely have all of your um, whatever kind of, I want to say like additives are ready, whatever, uh, ingredients that you want into your piece, have those ready before you do the ice melt, because you do want them, um, to add them in right away. The other thing that I'm going to be using in set into mine is going to be some gold. So this is edible gold, um, flakes. You can use the sheets as well. You just have to pull them apart. I think that these are a little bit easier just because they're already kind of shredded. Uh, I definitely need to get more soon because I use this so often, but I like this. And then I use the little wooden chopsticks, um, or tweezers. Um, that it came with, uh, and that just makes it really easy to pull away because sometimes the metal ones or plastic ones don't work as well. So wooden um, tweezers work really, really good. And so I'll be using that inside as well. All right. So first off, the back layer of this piece is going to be an edible sheet. Now, you don't even have to do the edible sheet if you don't want to. You could just do all flowers. You could paint on the back of it when it's cool instead. But this makes it so much easier, and I definitely can trust this way more than I trust my handwriting of painting onto something. But if you have better handwriting than me, you definitely can use that. Okay, now um, to get the solo sheet off of the backing, uh, we need to kind of break the suction first. So don't do this on your silicone mat like I am. Do it on a, um, a cutting mat. But I'm just going to cut the corner all the way across. And if you're not sure which is the surface of the solo sheet, you can take a little bit of water on your finger and just tap it. There's a plastic side and a solo sheet side. And the solo sheet, of course, will start to get sticky from the water, but the plastic won't. So the um, sticky side is the solo sheet. So I cut on the solo sheet side. And then I, if you can kind of see that, I cut the whole corner off. I'm waiting for it to catch up to make sure you can see. So that you can kind of break the section of the edge. You can't really just peel these from the edge. There you go, you can see that in there. And then I just fold it and it should just come right off. Depending on your humidity level, Icing Images recommends not pulling the entire sheet off at once just because it can um, crack if you're in a really dry or a really, really humid climate. But I've uh, here in Florida, I haven't had that problem. Mostly I try and use half sheets at a time if I can. Um, so the sheet that I did was a half. Um, I just cut it in half. Okay. I do have to pour this face up so that I can see it rather than um, the opposite way. So uh, it'll be a little bit flipped, but I'll show you both sides. All right, so I'm laying that right out onto my sheet. So if you're not using the non-stick liner, you can also use that piece of non-stick aluminum foil. And now I'm going to use my flex form. So there might be little pieces of, <laughs> of flower petal on here from when I just uh, pre-poured one a little bit ago. So if you see that, just ignore that. Um, but we're just going to be arranging our flex forms directly over the sheet. So this is a whole piece of the sheet. I'm not worrying about cutting this out into the design first. You could if you really wanted to, but I'm not going to worry about that. And I'm going to use these as a form. So the flex forms are awesome because you can put them into any form that you want. You can use as many of them as you want. And I'm just going to line them up so that one is kind of on top of the other to create this V shape. Because if I put both of them like that, you see how it creates like this little um, arch here. I don't want that in my kind of dent inside the heart. So I'm going to put one on top of the other like that. 
and depending on how long these are, um, like which ones you're using, because we have lengths all the way up to, I think like four or five feet long of these. These are the minis, um, the smaller ones. I believe they're 20 inches. They are. And um, depending on that, you may have to just prop it a little bit. So I'm just going to use my little torch. Let me just make sure you guys can still see that with the torch there. I just turned it, so I'm waiting for the lag to catch up. Yeah, you can see that. So I'm just going to use the torch to help prop it. You just don't want to use anything flammable. So like I wouldn't use the can of glaze uh, or something like that because we don't want to accidentally torch near that. Okay, so I'm just making sure that that's all lined up and then I will go ahead and pour my ice melt over it. So I started heating it. Let's see. I'm gonna give it another 30 seconds or so in the microwave. So again, we're gonna melt our tiles for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it's a liquid. Because it is pre-cooked, you don't have to worry about temperatures or recipes or anything. Just melt it in that microwave for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it comes to a boil. The boil is really important because you wanna bring any little air pockets that might've gotten trapped around the tiles as it was melting. You wanna bring those out and not have any bubbles in your piece. So boiling helps the hot air to rise and then pop. So I'm just checking it every 30 minutes or so. Mine was already fairly liquid. It just wasn't quite liquid enough for what I wanted to do. So I don't need to get it piping, piping hot. If you accidentally do get it piping hot, you can just let it cool at room temperature until the bubbles settle. But I am gonna get my flowers ready. So I'm gonna be using the roses today. So I just brought that to a boil. You can see all of those bubbles. You can bring it to an even bigger boil than this if you hadn't already started heating it like I did um, before the live started. But you can see that it's slowly kind of dissipating as it starts to cool back down. So I am gonna wait till all those bubbles settle. It's okay to have some stuck to the bowl, but you don't want any rising and popping and moving when you're pouring, because then you're just pouring bubbles into the piece. So all of the ice mold on top, for the most part, should not be boiling. It should be nice and flat when you go to use it. Okay, check in the comments. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, let's see. Heather said pansies were my mom's favorite. I love pansies. I just think they're such a pretty shade of like a purpley, violety blue. Beautiful flowers. Thank you. Awesome. And yeah, like I said, you can use sprinkles instead. Sprinkles would be pretty. You can use other uh, just like patterns of edible images instead. So like I have the egg that we did for our was it last play date or the play date before that? Um, our little egg here, and that one's just a solo sheet, one of our stained glass designs. So that would be beautiful inside of the uh, ice melt as well if you wanted to just do a whole pattern instead of words and adding other things into it. Right. Lots of options here. So I am just almost ready to pour. I can see that most of the bubbles have gone away, but there's still just a couple that I can see kind of moving around. And again, you wanna have all of your different decorations ready to go because this is gonna start cooling pretty quickly and we want them to stick as well as possible. So I wanna just kinda of have a couple of these ready to go. These roses smell amazing every time I open this bag. <laughs> um, and the gold and the roses that I'm using are linked on my Amazon storefront. I have an affiliate with that. It's uh, linked on my website if you go to the shop page. Not the store, but the actual shop page on our seemycakes.com. Uh, and both of those are linked if you want to see the exact ones I use. All right. Perfect. Okay, so this should be good. Now, again, we want to work kind of quick with this, so I have everything set to go. My flex forms are in place. I don't feel like they're going to move or pop or anything out of place. Um, and now you can go as big or small as you want with this heart shape that you do. Of course, it doesn't have to be a heart. It could be any shape. But um, I really like the flex forms with the heart because it just makes such a pretty sort of like, um, kind of like a little bit of like a wonky, whimsical look because I do it off to the side, but you can do it more perfect if you want. Now, another thing is you may want to just make sure there is a little bit of room around the outside for the flowers or the sprinkles or whatever you're going to do because if there's not enough room they're going to all go on top of the words and you won't be able to read it as well unless you do the design flipped um, you do it opposite and then you end up using the other side as the front if that makes sense so you could put things in the background and have the underside as the front rather than for me this is going to be the front in the end um, so that's up to you guys again the camera flips the words so you guys are reading it backwards but to me reading it right now it reads forwards I know that's all very mathy and complicated but hopefully that made sense uh perfect 
Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and pour our ice melt. Now remember, whenever you're pouring the ice melt, it is very, very hot. It's about 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius. So be very, very careful. I do recommend wearing gloves, a cotton glove, and then a nitrile or latex glove layered on top of that will buffer the heat from your hands and keep everything from sticking. So just make sure that you are protecting your hands, um, whatever you do, and don't follow my bad example because I'm not wearing gloves, only because I've been doing this for over 16 years and my hands do not feel heat anymore. So it is easier for me to show you guys in more detail without them but definitely definitely wear those gloves whenever you're working with ice melt because um, you just want to take any precaution you can just like working with an oven you know you do learn how to safely and comfortably work with the heat but you still wear your oven mitts you know you're still paying attention hopefully and being careful same rules apply with ice melt and the more you work with it the more comfortable and confident you're gonna get all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and pour out a thin layer of ice melt just enough to cover the bottom because we're gonna actually do a second layer onto this to encase everything so I'm just going to kind of let the ice melt run out to the edge. You can use a little like silicone tool or something to help push it if you want to, if it's not going all the way into the places that you need it to. I don't really worry about getting it super pointy at the end, as long as it comes to kind of a rounded point, that's fine with me. If you do have any little stray bubbles, you can kind of see these stragglers here. Sometimes that happens, but they do rise because as hot air rises. So what I'll do is I'll just immediately go ahead and use the torch over the whole surface to pop them. And you want to pop those bubbles before you add all of your decorations because you don't want to burn any of the flower petals or anything. So make sure that you do that first. And now immediately before these are going to um, start setting up, I'm going to take the flower petals. And I'm just going to kind of with this one, I like to pop the little calyx off of the bottom because I'm not going to use that and then I'll just break up those flower petals a little bit okay. and you can kind of grind them more or less with your fingers uh, but I think that those look really pretty with kind of like the orangey tones to the bottom too and you're just going to quickly start to sprinkle those all around you can use tweezers as well um, just to make sure your hands don't accidentally touch the ice malt I'm staying a good like inch or so above the surface. I'm not going close. And I kind of want a mixture of like littler pieces and bigger pieces, but design wise, that's up to you. Okay. Silicone um, kind of has like a, what do you call that? A, um, not a friction, but like it sucks things into um, the surface. Uh, like it likes to stick so I probably will definitely make sure that I wash these afterwards because little pieces of like that there's a there's a sciencey word for that I can't think of it where like the pieces want to stick to the silicone <laughs> like the static static yeah that's what it is <laughs> I knew there was a word for it <laughs> never comes to my brain when I need to use the word okay so that looks really pretty with just the flower petals but I'm gonna go ahead and take my gold leaf now and just add a little bit of sparkle because what doesn't need a little bit of sparkle all right I'll just kind of if it kind of clumps up I just take a big clump and I'll just kind of touch it and let some of the gold pull off of my tweezers Gold leaf never kind of goes where you want it to, but as long as it gets close, I'm fine with that. And you don't have to worry about the little stringing that it's doing? No, the little strings, um, I can torch those away, but we're actually going to pour another layer of ice mold on top of this to encase it all, so they'll all melt in if you do accidentally touch the tweezers to the surface, like I tend to do. All right, so I don't use very much of that um, because it is, you know, gold, so I want to conserve it, but also I think that the flowers are really pretty and I just want a hint of like sparkle here and there. Okay, so I think that that turned out really nice. I know it's backwards for you guys, but I'll pick it up in just a couple of minutes when it starts to cool down. And I'm gonna put these off to the side really quick. Again, we don't want to torch over that now that we put all the pieces. So whether that's sprinkles, that's different kinds of dried flowers, um, the gold, you could use like sanding sugar in it if you wanted to. Uh, anything like that is fine. You could even use other edible images. So have some on the back, lay some in, pour more ice melt, lay more in. You know, you can kind of do like a layered effect with the edible images. If you wanted to add that depth, it would be very pretty. You could even potentially paint onto it and then pour more ice melt over top if you wanted to. But you would have to wait for this first layer to cool before you paint. Um, but you can layer ice melt that way. 
Now you could just leave the piece like this and have all of the beautiful sort of crackly texture of the flower petals not sitting completely flat if you wanted to and that would be fine there is nothing wrong with that the reason that i like to pour another layer on top of this once it cools down a little bit is because it really does set the pieces in so it anchors them more permanently so i know nothing's going to fall off or come off if it wasn't attached properly now um, but also it just adds like a really nice depth to the piece and a very smooth finish that looks very very pretty across the top so it looks very flat like glass um, or like almost like those beautiful resin pieces that have so much layer uh, layering of colors and designs in them and so I'd like to do the second layer but if you were trying to have more texture if you were trying to use less product or less weight onto your piece you could definitely um, avoid that second pour you don't have to do it I just feel like it really does kind of cement everything in um, now you don't want to pour that right away because the ice mold now is still kind of liquidy and soft so it has um, the uh, it has the chance, <laughs> my words aren't coming to me today, it has the chance for the flower petals to like move around if they're not anchored and cooled into place yet. Uh, and it also could pour kind of unevenly because it'll try and mix with the ice melt underneath. So I do let that cool probably about 15 or 20 minutes before I put the next layer on top. It doesn't have to be completely solid or completely cooled. You just want it to be firm enough that you don't feel like anything's going to move and uh, it doesn't feel like it's liquidy anywhere anymore. Um, so yeah, I would just kind of let that cool and you can do a bunch of these at a time if you have different flex forms uh, or you can do them one at a time if you just need the one. All right. Now I do have one pre-made, so I will use a little bit of demo magic here. I'm going to slide this off to the side and we will fast forward a little bit. So it's very, very simple to pour the second layer. All you do is essentially just fill over the rest of the piece. It'll probably go almost all the way to the top of the flex forms. It's okay if it doesn't, but I just pour enough to encase it for the next layer. And there is our second one. So I did have to use the flex forms um, for this next one. So all I did was I just peeled them away and I did not take the plastic, or uh, sorry, the cello sheet backing off yet, as you can see. But that is how it's going to look. And do you see how it's so flat and smooth across the top of it? I'm going to try and turn it so that you can see. It doesn't have the texture of the, like, the flower petals or the gold sticking up really. Except for maybe one or two places where it stuck out of the ice mold. And I just, I love that. I feel like it looks a lot more like glass that way. Um, not having the flower petals and things have like the texture. You could also, um, like I did for this one, you could set some of the bigger uh, buds into the piece if you wanted to as well and that can kind of add like a pretty sort of billowing effect uh, so you could definitely do that if you wanted to set some of the bigger pieces in or of course when I did the one with the pansies I put the whole flowers in um, so you can kind of see them going around that's the front of it so you can see the flowers themselves rather than the backs of them all right, so that's up to you, you know, whatever kind of design you want to do. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the plastic off. So again, we had already poured the second layer after that one cooled a little bit, and then we just let it cool the rest of the way and remove the flex forms, which just fall right off. So what we're going to do now is I like to get some of the excess cello sheet away. So again, this is all edible. It's all just the cello sheet. And I'm just going to take some of that away first to make it easier on myself. I leave a good, like, at least half inch to an inch because it makes it a little easier when we go back in with our exacto to have more to work with. It's just a little bit too much right now. All right. And if the ice vault had gone underneath the flex forms or like accidentally spilled up and over or anything and you have excess ice vault, it's no big deal. We can fix that later or you probably won't even notice it um, once the piece is finished. All right. Got the little solo sheet extras here. All right, now you could use scissors to cut the whole thing right to the edge if you had a more perfectly straight piece um, or edges that are easier to do that. But a lot of times with more intricate kind of angles and things, it's hard to get the scissors into the right edges. So I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and I'm just going to go right up against the edge. And it's almost like, you guys know how when you cut wrapping paper, you kind of find that smooth spot where it just glides right through after a second. That's what we're kind of going for. You could also pull and kind of break the pieces off but it's not as clean so I'm just 
going around the edge making sure my fingers are not in the way okay and again if i encounter a spot where the ice mold was not a perfectly smooth or rounded edge i could go back and fix that with a little bit of torching if i want And even if there was little bits of solo sheet that aren't perfect, they're clear, so they're kind of hard to see anyway, but you can go back and sort of take those off. I'm angling the tip of my X-Acto knife underneath a little bit, so I'm not just cutting it straight up and down. I'm angling it just slightly underneath the piece so that it will kind of cut up and underneath a little bit. I'm trying to get it at the right angle so you guys can see. it is right and I just I really love how much this looks like glass like it, it looks like yeah. or one of those really pretty acrylic toppers because um, of course you can get you know those pre-made acrylic toppers but with this you can customize the writing that you want you can customize the color palette the flavor of the piece because you can't actually eat it if you wanted to um, and you can customize the flowers that are in it to match you know exactly what the cake is going to look like uh, I just really really love this now of course if you did this a little bit smaller these would be awesome for lollipops which I'm going to show you some applications of how to put them together now um, so these would be awesome for lollipops or you could even do this as a cookie so instead of using the flex forms around the outside if you bake a window cookie so just a cookie with a hole in the center of it you can put that whole cookie onto your edible sheet and then pour into the hole that you have uh, inside your pre-baked cookie and that's where the design would be so if you wanted to make little window cookies like this and put your edible flowers or your cello sheets or icing sheets your edible gold your sprinkles anything like that would be so so pretty and I just, I love how it looks like the wind is kind of blowing the petals and everything. I think that that turned out really nice. All right. Perfect. So now let's talk a little bit about application. All right. So applying this onto some different kind of treats and desserts. Can I ask a question? First? Yeah, absolutely. Terry would like to know, by the way you're handling the piece, I assume fingerprints don't transfer? Um, so they can if you, um, if it is particularly sticky outside. Um, you can get tra uh, fingerprints on the piece. I'm going to spray mine with the clear edible glaze spray, which takes away most of the fingerprints anyway. But if you aren't worried about that, I'm trying to handle it by the edges or like um, I kind of have fingernails so I can kind of not put my fingers directly on it. But you can wear just the plastic gloves and when you're doing this part to make sure that you don't get smudged or anything or it had not sticky on the back right no it's not at all because of the cello sheets um, but if you have like paint on your hands like I usually have some kind of edible paint or anything on my hands you definitely want to wear gloves so it doesn't smudge all right perfect great questions guys keep them coming all right so um, what we are gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I did this one because I feel like this would be um, the most uh, applicable of you know toppers because you want it to actually sit down into the cake let me do it so you can see it okay so sitting down into the cake like this uh, so what I'm gonna use is actually an acrylic lollipop stick and I love these acrylic lollipop sticks because they are clear so you don't really see them behind the piece as much as you would like a regular lollipop stick which you still could use or a, a popsicle stick would work for this a dowel um, you know anything is fine but these are clear so it really really um, helps with making sure that you don't see it okay. so I'm just melting a little bit of ice malt here you can attach it on either side it doesn't really matter but I usually would do it on the cello sheet side on the back so whichever side is going to be the back of your piece. And I want to make sure my ice mold is pretty hot when I do this. And I'm, I like to do two so it doesn't have a chance of spinning. Because if there's... Because the picture is reversed, it looks like you're putting it on the front. It does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just going to put those two kind of strategically hidden behind the point of the heart there. And again, I like to do two because one can spin on the cake um, as you're, you know, moving it somewhere or attaching other flowers and things around the base maybe. But another thing you can do is you can attach it to a base. So I just made another piece with my flex forms for this one. I'm um, just like a little teardrop uh, kind of paisley shape. And I just attached the heart on its side. So I made sure when I poured 
the um, cello sheet that I angled the cello sheet a little bit so that it would be readable if it was sitting on its side like this and I think that was really pretty too so if you want a little bit more of a stable base to just be able to set on top of the cake you could definitely do that and if your piece is particularly heavy or your cake is particularly soft you can put supports in the cake like straws like you would for stacking tiers to make sure that it supports the weight of this piece even though um, I set a pound of ice melt for this project but I think you could get both of them out of the pound so these are definitely not a whole pound each um, you could get to and you may even have a little excess depending on how thick you pour those so they're not crazy heavy it just depends how thick you do them all right perfect so um that would be kind of my uh, application but again you can do different things i actually have a couple of lollipops i can show you the example of doing sprinkles so if you wanted to do sprinkles uh, i did a few different kind of color combos here Okay, so these are with sprinkles and a little bit of gold leaf in a couple of them. Okay, so that is the front, the ice melt side. And then the back, you can kind of see the sprinkles are sticking out slightly, which looks really cute too if you wanted a little bit more texture onto your pieces. You could do that. I also did a couple of them with just gold. So just gold would be beautiful too. It would be very elegant. I didn't actually... Um, spray these with the edible glaze spray because I've had them just sitting in a sealed container but if I hit them with the torch really lightly here they'll get even shinier okay. and so you could definitely do just the gold leaf inside if you're going a little bit more elegant and more kind of like simplistic it would be very very pretty try and get them at an angle you can see so that would be pretty just around the, the pattern too But again, do a little test with whatever kind of sprinkles and things you're using because some of them can melt in the ice melt. It just depends what they're made out of. Um, if you're using like a drage or like a um, like non pearls, they're usually fine. Um, and uh, yeah, that would be really really nice. But again, you know, if you're doing lollipop sizes of these, you can shrink this design down to a lot smaller to do lollipops of this instead, and just use one lollipop stick or put it in a lollipop mold instead. Donna asks, uh, and you can flavor these too? Yeah, you can add either an oil-based or a powder-based flavoring. Uh, the oil-based will be more transparent, so that would be re what I'd recommend for this. The powders work really good too because they're very concentrated, uh, but those are going to be a little bit more opaque, so it just depends on the finish that you're going for. More Than Cake? Yeah, More Than Cake has awesome flavors. Um, their powder flavors are great. Okay. I did those crooked because I wasn't really paying attention when I put the angles on. But it could be, you know, like a cute little whimsical sort of topper onto there and then that would just you can cut these down with um like wire cutters uh and you can cut those shorter if you wanted but these would be very secure into your cake depending on how tall it is uh and yeah so that is my technical front because that's the ice melt side but i know to you guys it looks backwards so you could do either way Ooh, don't drop it and so also the sweet chalet ha didn't they have a liquid color or a liquid flavor yeah yeah you can use pretty much any flavor would um, go into these fine as long as it's not a gel doesn't have any like gel in it but you do want to just make sure that um, it doesn't have any sort of glycerin or anything mixed in but I mean you could use an extract as well um, it's just they evaporate out faster so um, yeah the sweet chili has really good um, flavors into oh, yeah, it. Yeah. all right any other questions guys all right it's fantastic I'm gonna tilt my camera up so that I can hold these up so you can see them a little bit Better. Hello again. All right. So what do you guys think? I mean, you could change these up. Of course, these are very floral and kind of feminine for Mother's Day. But if you wanted to do Father's Day, you could do, um, you know, different colored sprinkles. Again, the royal icing transfers or even just edible images would work really good layered into here instead. Um, you could do like icing images rather than the clear ones so that the clear and kind of the white background contrast really nicely. So there is my topper that is ready to go right down into that cake so it would sit about there you could put a couple of flowers around it if you wanted to okay here was the purple one that i did before i love that super mom i think that's so pretty around the edge you could paint that new metallic paint from um, oh that would be really yeah the, um, i have the sweet color lab new metallic paints that i've been loving i've been using them for everything um but yeah that would be really pretty to kind of edge around it you can even add more sprinkles around it with piping gel if you want um, I think this one is actually, I'll show you kind of taking the flex forms off really quick. This is the one we poured before. So again, I would put another layer onto this, but I wanted to show you taking the flex forms off. I don't need to do that. Put another layer on for that. Um, so when you take those off, 
are just gonna fall right off. Okay. And now this one doesn't have that second layer. So you see how you see the texture of all of the petals and the gold and everything um, kind of on the surface? That's really pretty too though. I mean, you can see a couple pieces are kind of falling off, but if you sort of brushed it with a, like a dry paintbrush just to make sure all the loose ones fall off, that would still be very, very pretty on the top of your cake as well. And it's a lot thinner than the other pieces. So it definitely, I mean, this probably weighs only like four or five ounces. So it doesn't take very much ice melt either, which is nice. So super pretty. Oh yeah. Lots of different ways that you can change this up. Oh, I'm so glad you guys like them. Fantastic. Awesome. So I want to go over a couple of exciting um, announcements that we have before uh, I let you guys go um, after this live today. So I am working on our next play date. I do one of these every month. So if you want to come back and join me next month, I am working on it and I'm very excited about that. But I'll have that picture uh, for you in a few days. Um, but let's see, we have uh, the announcement is coming up for our online Sugar Splash Cake and Cookie competition next week. So we did a competition last year, it's a virtual competition, and it was so much fun. So we decided to bring it back uh, for this year, and we will have lots of info, but we have a lot of categories. We have such awesome prizes. We just had to get it all together, yeah. so we're a little behind. <laughs> it's been a little bit crazy, but it's still going to be awesome, um, and we have some amazing judges. It's just going to be a great time. So uh, we will have all the info on that next week, and uh, it's going to be open to everyone to enter, and it is virtual. Um, let's see, this Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time is our skill social. We're going to be going over all different ways to use ice mold in cookie cutters, which I'm sure you guys have a few, if not a few hundred of those. So make sure to jump on that. It is on Zoom, so it's a skill social, about an hour of guided practice time. It's always so much fun, and we get so many ideas from each other of just kind of kind of having that focused, dedicated practice time. Um, you can sign up on my website. It's just $5. And I also have an option to do a pre-recorded uh, version of that as well. Um, to get the techniques. Let's see, we are going to be at SoFlow April 26th through 28th in Miami, Florida, um, and we're at booth 531, uh, and we will be doing tons of fun demonstrations. We have uh, all of our best-selling products will be there, so make sure to come and say hi if you're going to be in Miami, um, and we are doing pre-ordering. Uh, you have to order by April 17th if you want to do a pre-order to pick up at the show, um, and we're yeah, doing a, yeah, a discount for pre-orders. It's 10% off, so if you're going to be in Miami and you want to pick up your order um, and save on shipping, you'll save 10% as well. Uh, let's see, we have an in-person class, a couple of in-person classes coming up. Uh, in April, I'm teaching at the Florida Academy of Baking in Satellite Beach, Florida, which is here in our area. They are amazing, and I have one class that already sold out, my Under the Sea class, so we added a second date. So the first one's in April that sold out. We added a second date in May, um, and I'm working on some fun summer projects as well for them, so make sure you check that out. Um, I'm going to be doing kind of like a Father's Day theme uh, for one coming up in June. Uh, let's see. We also have our Cocoa Beach summer classes uh, are going to be happening in Cocoa Beach uh, in June. So that will be very, very fun. Um, those are going to be a whole weekend of classes. Um, and our hotel is amazing. It's where we do our retreat every year. Uh, so they have a lazy river. It's a walking distance to the beach. It's so much fun. Uh, let's see. We're going to do a Saturday night pizza party by the pool, uh, too, for anybody who comes. So there is still a few spots available for that if you want to sign up. We're going to have so, so so much fun that weekend. Like a mini retreat. Yeah, it's going to be like a mini retreat, um, and I'm really, really excited for that. Uh, let's see, I have um, my next play date, like I said, I'm working on, so I'll have the info on that in a couple days uh, when you guys, if you guys want to follow along to the next one. I also have an online demo on May 18th for the Capital Confectioners group. Um, that is going to be virtual, so if you are a member for them, um, keep your eyes peeled because I have a very fun project coming. I'm working on that today. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to be at Cookie Con uh, in uh, Austin, Round Rock, right this yes, year September. Uh, in September, and I have a class uh, which I'm very, very excited about. And we will also have um, some in-person classes happening uh, again with Dinky Doodle that we're very excited about over in the UK. So again, lots of things coming up. We're kind of working on a hundred things at that once. One. What's one? Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. I didn't write it down. Okay, I have one more exciting thing to tell you about. Next week, first. Next weekend is our next Facebook Live class, so it'll be like this, but it's in a private event group with a little bit more advanced techniques, um, and you can sign up for that on my website if you want access, but we're going to be making our pouring um, teacup tulip. I'm really, really happy with how this one came out. I love tulips, Hold on, and I think it came out nope. really pretty. Uh, mine's still going, I think. Okay. Let me make sure. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> so this will be happening in a closed Facebook event um, so that you can watch and ask questions, and it'll be a little bit more advanced techniques for the structure uh, and making the flowers and the tea set and everything. So I'm very excited about that. The sign-up for that is on my website as well. I 
And all of these projects that we do, I always do a discounted accessory kit, so you can get all the tools on our website, but if you get them bundled into the kit for each specific project, uh, we do 20% off of the kits for those. So make sure you always look in our DIY kits category if you're looking to do a specific project. All right. Last and final announcement that I can't wait for. We are having our See Me Retreat again next year in January. And uh, the last one was so, so, so much fun. Uh, we had kind of like a pirate and mermaid theme going on um, with our amazing instructors, uh, Don from Dinky Doodle and Donald Joyner from CBC Designs here in Florida. And uh, we had so much fun and we are very, very excited to be getting the details together for the next one. So we have a little announcement of the theme coming out. Now, I'm going to post it today, but only to uh, everyone who's in the last retreat. So make sure if you were in the last retreat, check out the group. And then tomorrow I'm going to post it everywhere of what our next theme is going to be. So put in the comments what you think the theme is going to be, um, because I uh, am really excited about this one. I had so many ideas and it was really hard to narrow down what to do, but I will be posting my class project piece, um, which will be the reveal of what the theme is. And we will have the other classes coming soon uh, and then more details on how to sign up for that in the early summer. All right. Am I missing anything? I think that might cover it. Okay. Perfect. Well, uh, I really appreciate you guys hanging out and spending some of your Saturday with me today. I had so much fun and I hope that you uh, enjoyed and you learned a lot. And if you ever have any questions, whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay afterwards, because I do put all these replays on my YouTube channel. If you ever want to go back and watch one, uh, they're on my Facebook too, but it's easier to find in a playlist on YouTube. You can always send me a message with any questions that you have on um, here on Facebook, on Instagram. You can send me an email um, to info at seemingcakes.com. I'm always happy to answer questions about past projects or current projects and we have two really good ideas oh three Ooh. pj party yep winter wonderland oh i like that space oh those are very good guesses so well we will have the info coming for you guys so keep your eyes peeled Oh, sock hop. That's a great idea, too. Ooh. We're definitely going to have to save some of these, too, for future years, because I love all of those. All right. Fantastic. Well, uh, I will see you guys very soon, I'm sure, in another live or class. Hopefully, I'll see you guys on Monday night on our next Skill Social. Uh, and thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good rest of your weekend. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.